Thank you very much for joining me. I'm meteorologist Brian Shields. I want to get a look at the names for the upcoming hurricane season, but I want to take you into the kind of a longer term outlook through this spring into the uh, start of the uh, summer, or at least closer to the start of the summer. Very important for the upcoming hurricane season and for any agriculture. A lot of us need to get some rain. We need it for just a uh, simple groundwater, well water, filling up the cisterns. And as we get into the growing season, we have been too dry. The, the fire season, the wild fire season starting a little earlier in some spots so uh, that could be uh, not so great over the next couple months but I want to show you when more rain will head our way now here's a look uh, at a kind of a broader outlook this is for the month of April it really includes this month into April. So the rest of March into April, we're going to be about average as far as rainfall is concerned. When you look at this map, here's the Gulf, here's the Caribbean, United States here, Canada, uh, you get back toward uh, South America, Central America, you see this green here, that would be above average rain. Where you see kind of this yellower shading in some spots, that would be below average rain. So the next two months, month and a half to two months, we will be drier than average uh, near Jamaica, Cayman Islands, Cuba, back through Belize, for example. Elsewhere, about average, could be a little bit above average near the U.S. and British Virgin Islands over toward Anguilla, but generally the next two months, about average as far as rain is concerned. Now, let me jump ahead into May. Look how there's more green in here. You see that? We're going to see more moisture building. There are some signs May into the start of the hurricane season, which starts June 1st, we're gonna see increased moisture. That's good because a lot of us need rain. Not so good in the sense that can mean an earlier start to the season with a better chance of some development, maybe an early season tropical storm or a pre-season tropical storm. Month of May, sometimes we get some tropical storms around. And you see with this surge of moisture here, above average rain, parts of uh, over toward the ABC Islands, as we get back toward northern sections of South America, Colombia, Venezuela, uh, back through Panama, where we need to get some rain, Costa Rica, and up through uh, Jamaica, Haiti, Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico, Trinidad and Tobago, Barbados, St. Lucia, a higher chance of rain, or at least above average rain, for the month of May. A little bit below average, northern Bahamas, back through Florida, Cuba, and again back through Belize. But let me go ahead here into June. Look what happens as we jump into June. More of that green sliding to the north, still above average rain. And this will be in the hurricane season as we get into summer. So we're going to see uh, above average moisture out there. That's an ingredient for tropical storms and hurricanes to develop. Let's hope we don't get anything uh, crazy, but we do need to get some rain. But this does lend itself to a quicker start to the hurricane season. I do believe there'll be a name system in the month of May, even before the season starts. And it could be a little more active than average in June. We have increased moisture, plus we're losing El Nino, which is typical. El Nino usually only lasts nine to 12 months, but it's a quicker transition this time into La Nina. And what La Nina means is less wind shear out there. So you don't get the, the uh, winds knocking the thunderstorms apart. So they are allowed to build up. And as they build up, we could get some good circulation and get a tropical storm or a hurricane. So typically La Nina, which we'll have this summer, does mean less wind shear and typically means more hurricanes, but this channel is not built on fear. It is just built on accuracy. Uh, this doesn't mean we're going to see something hitting us. It just means, yeah, I do believe we're going to have more tropical storms and hurricanes this year, but where they go, there's no telling. So it's just kind of waiting and seeing, and I'll be able to track it storm by storm. Once the storm actually develops, I'll be able to know where it's going to go. But either way, it does look like with La Nina coming in here and extra moisture around, which we actually need to get some rain, we could have a quicker start to the season. Now, the season itself starts June 1st. The peak of the season is really August through October. That's when we have most tropical storms and hurricanes. Now, even before the season, every other year or so, we get a named storm in May. And I do believe that this year, because of what I just showed you, going to a La Nina and having uh, more rain around, more available moisture, we will have a preseason name system somewhere. It doesn't mean it's gonna hit land, but I do think something is gonna spin up at least in the month of May. So again, it should be a slightly earlier start to the hurricane season, but doesn't mean we're gonna see this uh, big system just uh, moving in, but we do need some rain. I try to look at the plus side of it. That will be some uh, good news. But again, the next month or two, 
drier than average or at least average for some of us and then in May we'll start to turn the corner. Now we get about 55 to 65 tropical waves a season. Those are the ones that roll off the coast of Africa and that usually starts in May. So we'll start to see those tropical waves out there and then because there's more moisture around in the month of May, at least how it looks uh, this year, uh, something could definitely uh, spin up. Now as far as the names go this season, Alberto, Beryl, Chris, these are the names on the list. The names are recycled every six years. There's a, a, a six list. Uh, now, if uh, there's a big storm out there, the name would get retired and a new name would be in. But you may see some familiar names because we've had them before. Ernesto, Francine, and Gordon. And different areas have different lists. Eastern Pacific has a different list of names. So you may hear some uh, different names. They're not necessarily out of order. Just different basins, different areas around the world have different uh, naming uh, systems or different names. Now, getting a look at what we can expect and where we're going to see some rain. There's the front, just what I was talking about yesterday or at least some moisture around parts of Florida moving into the Bahamas. We've had some showers in some other spots. You see this system here moving toward the east coast, another system that's going to build back to the west. Now a lot of these are moving to the north. I'll get into the Atlantic region of Canada in a second and I want to zoom down into the Caribbean as we try to find some showers. But there's that system east coast of the United States but unlike the last few months, it doesn't really dip down too much because this we're, we're getting late into the uh, winter, about to get into spring. More of the front staying to the north. There's another one coming out of the Rocky Mountains, bringing some rain to parts of uh, Texas, uh, Arkansas, over toward uh, Kentucky and uh, Tennessee as we work our way into later this week. But that one also staying to the north of the Caribbean. I'll take you out in time further in just a second as we get into our northern uh, sections. But as we go through today, we're looking at a few spotty showers, Guyana and Suriname, and I was talking about that yesterday, a little more moisture coming in from the Atlantic, so our rain chance will be a bit higher today. Elsewhere, it's going to be very spotty. This is tomorrow, Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic, Haiti. We may catch a shower too. Then Guyana and uh, Suriname, the rain chance will go down. Spotty shower possible, Trinidad, St. Lucia, Grenada, Antigua, Barbuda, Montserrat. But overall, again, you see generally a drier pattern. Most of us will be staying on the dry side. All right, getting back to the Atlantic region of Canada as promised. Here's New England. Get back toward the mid-Atlantic. You see this mainly a rainmaker. Now we'll see this working in as we get into tonight over toward uh, New Brunswick. You can see St. John. We'll start out with some rain and then it kind of switches around. As this system moves across uh, tomorrow, some of the colder air on the backside, that will mean some accumulating snow, especially for uh, Newfoundland. We'll see a better chance of some snow. This is our third Thursday afternoon and then the system as we work our way into tomorrow night continues to press away but still on the backside some colder air wrapping in some snow even for Friday and then we'll keep an eye on that next system that will be back to the west of us so passing shower that's what we're going to see mainly dry conditions for a lot of us Jamaica 20% chance of a shower Cayman Islands about a 20 to 30% chance 30% chance tomorrow in Trinidad 30% chance tomorrow in Barbados so we've seen some batches of showers every now and then for certain islands while others we have been just so so dry St. Lucia 20 to 30 percent chance tomorrow and Friday and about a 20 percent chance tomorrow and Friday in Grenada same thing as we get towards St. Vincent and the Grenadines working our way into Martinique isolated shower very limited chance in Dominica although it picks up a bit toward the end of the week rain chance about 20 percent in Guadeloupe minimal rain chance Antigua and Barbuda mainly dry. St. Kitts, Nevis, Montserrat, rain chance on track and with that being very low. Anguilla and St. Bart's, 10 to 20% chance. 10% chance St. Martin, Saba, and Stacia. Rain chance a little higher in Puerto Rico. I showed you a little green on the map when we were tracking that together. A passing shower possible. Same thing U.S. and British Virgin Islands. Rain chance tomorrow and Friday about 30% in the DR. Haiti were mainly dry. Can't rule out a stray uh, shower, especially higher elevations closer to the DR. Behind Bahamas, best chance of showers would be uh, as we go throughout today in our northern zones, uh, drier in our southern zones. Turks and Caicos, rain chance about 20%, and only a 10 to 20% chance of a shower in Cuba. And I was showing you that outlook the next couple months drier than average before we get more moisture building in. Belize, we're mainly on the dry side. Same thing, Yucatan and Mexico. And again, these spots, we're going to be drier than average through April. Rain chance about 20% in Aruba today, about a 30% chance of a passing shower in Curacao. 
Curacao, 20 to 30 percent chance of Bonaire. Bermuda, we could have a few showers around. Rain chance holding at 20 percent in Costa Rica and Panama. It will be a higher chance. We have a higher chance in Guyana and Suriname. Not a washout, but some scattered showers will be possible, uh, especially upwards of a 60 percent chance in Suriname as we go throughout the day. 20 to 30 percent chance in northern Venezuela. So uh, drier than average or average through April. So again, that's a concern for uh, drinking water, for our well water, and uh, for agricultural purposes. But I want to keep you posted on that. Now, as I get new information on that, I'll give you updates. Above average rain starts to kick in in May for some of us, and then even more so as we dive into the hurricane season, which could mean we could get a named storm earlier than when the season actually officially starts, which is June 1st. And of course, still keeping my eye on the, uh, the volcano just to the south of Mexico City by Puebla, watching some areas of ash and monitoring that earthquake cluster over toward Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands. There's been some extra shaking around, so I'll keep tabs on that. Thank you for being with me and sharing this information. Have a great rest of your day.